Hello, Acadiana. Thanks for joining us tonight. We have new gruesome discoveries on the death of New Iberia Arby's manager. As News 10 first reported, 63-year-old Niet Lee died after being trapped inside the restaurant's freezer back in May. Her family now filing a $1 million wrongful death lawsuit. In our top story tonight, News 10's Britt LaFaso spoke with the family's attorney who inspected the Arby's this week and is now telling it all. Britt. Alfred, as part of his inspection yesterday, attorney Paul Skorbonik locked himself in the Arby's freezer to get a sense for what Lee went through in her last moments. This is how he describes walking into the freezer at between negative 20 and 30 degrees. As soon as they opened the door, I just I got a feeling that I didn't want to be in there with the door shut. It immediately pierces your clothes. Your clothes go stiff. It feels like um, they're brittle. They're completely cold, cold to the touch. You, it chills you to your bone within 30 seconds. Attorney Paul Skorbonik says Niaz Lee was in the freezer for at least four to five hours. It's my understanding from talking to one of the employees that was there with her son that found her that she had completely frozen by the time they found her to the floor. He says that wasn't, however, his biggest discovery during the inspection. First, he says the broken latch on the freezer that allegedly led to Lee's death has already been replaced by management. He adds that new latch also malfunctioned when he handled it. Walking into that freezer, he also learned another key piece of information. There is a lever that you can pull that is supposed to be connected to an emergency system to alert the authorities if you get stuck in there. But he says it wasn't working. Scribana claims all he had to do to power it was turn the phone lines on, something he says was never done. And that could have saved Miss Lee's life. So it's not just the handle, it's the just outrageous notion that you wouldn't turn the phone lines on for the most basic life saving device in that freezer. His inspection also revealed a stranger piece of information. For some reason, they had cleaned out the entirety of the kitchen equipment, so there was no stove, no fryer. It was just empty space where you would think there would be a bunch of kitchen equipment, and I have no idea why they did that. When News 10 asked Grabonic why it took someone dying for these facts to come to light, he says he believes it's the culture of people they have in management positions at Turbo Restaurants, LLC. He says after looking at 15 pages of text messages from two former Arby's general managers to the regional manager, he learns the regional manager never responds to complaints. Complain about the freezer, no response. Complain about a robbery that had been there before, no response. Skorbonik says he believes this investigation could save another person's life in the future. This case, if we put it before a jury, I think that they're going to get pretty angry about these facts. And I think that anger is going to turn into sending a message. And I think that message is going to uh, ring throughout the nation. And people are, uh, that own these types of franchises are going to take note. Skobronik tells me he actually sought a temporary injunction to prevent Arby's from making any changes to the freezer before his inspection. Before the hearing, however, an attorney representing the company informed him the handle on the freezer had already been changed. Scrabonic says this could bring into play a legal concept called spoliation of evidence. Britt LaFaso, Kayla Fly News 10.